Hello everybody. All right, so we're doing a time and chain stuff on the Dodge. This is an 05 Dodge truck. It's got a 4.7 motor in it. What happened is, is the original engine failed. Customer bought a uh, used engine to go in it, and I had to swap oil pans due to damage to the engine's oil pan that they sent to me on the freight truck. The bottom of it was crushed in, and it's like, ah, I can't be having that. I didn't want anything to happen. So when I removed the oil pan, I noticed a piece of a time and chain guide laying in the bottom of it. Okay, all right, so I notified the customer anyways. Now, this is where we're at. So I have an engine on the floor, which makes it really easy to show. Let me show you something real quick. So there's the engine I have on the floor here. Um, I've got the timing cover already removed. And I said, well, I probably ought to do a video on this because this, this is kind of a common issue with these, with the plastic uh, cassettes, they call them, with the timing chain guides. And here's the front cover. We were getting ready to set the motor in, so I'd already replaced the water pump. To be you know new when i put the good used motor back into the quote unquote good used engine he supplied the motor so i'm you know this is going to be a little extra charge uh, this is why i don't supply used engines because of stuff like this you run into things and they act like you're not uh, they're not supposed to pay for that so usually I let the customer find used engines and bring them to me and i'll put them in just because of that problem that you run into um there's the old engine that we took out and uh, let me show you a little something about getting the, the timing cover off the, the harmonic balancer. Um, you can use a three jar, a three jar, <laughs> jar, jaw, <laughs> jar, jaw. Anyways, you can use a three jaw puller, uh, but they make a special puller for these right here. Let me show you real quick. So I have this puller set that's got multiple different Dumaflaches in it. Um, and this is an actual one specifically made for Chryslers and some vehicles similar to that. And the way they make the three jar, jar, <laughs> jaw, I can't talk, three jaw puller is um, it uh, locks into the harmonic balancer a whole lot better than a regular one that you'd see with the weird looking bow fingers and all. They don't really clamp that very well. And it has these little push rods that go into the center of the crank so you don't have to find a bolt to thread in there, you know. That works really, really well. You can use this in conjunction with that if you have to, but basically this thing here, and you can buy these, if you look for on Amazon, you wanna look for a puller like this to take that off. There's the part that goes in there. So let me show you a little bit about the time and chain on the front here. It's got three of them total, and we'll get into it a little bit deeper, but you have this one that runs to the jack shaft, which uh, is um, a funny thing. This isn't a, a one, in, one by two ratio. This is a one by three. And being that it takes, uh, I think, three turns to get one turn out of that because the rest of the ratios aspect is involved in the cam gear here and up there on the uh, camshafts. And the timing marks are a little weird because it doesn't have timing marks. It relies on you to look at a thing that, that crosses, that lines up with the corner of this cylinder head. So it's a little wonky when doing such, but you've got a, um, an access plug right here that you would use to get to part of the, uh, the tensioner our tensioner but the uh, guide bolt and so we, we've got the front off the next step will be to remove the, uh, the valve covers and and marking everything really well so that helps us stay lined up because the engine was supposedly running it's what they said at the place so maybe this thing isn't out of time it's still in time but we'll we'll, we'll double check to be sure and like i said i didn't have to take the water pump off i just had to take the strategic bolts out that held the timing cover on and uh, there's a, an image of what's left over on the water pump. So you can take a look at that screenshot, that right there. So you'll know you only got to take those three bolts out and the water pump can stay in place. And the rest of it comes off. And so let me uh, get in, let me get the valve covers off. And they'll give us a little better look at the rest of the chains. Though. But you can see the one chain there, another chain, and a separate one behind that. So a total of three. All right, here we go. Okay, so we're into this a little deeper now. You can see we've got the rocker arm, valve cover, camshaft cover, whatever you want to call that. Off, off of the, uh, and this is the side I, that I noticed a guide is just completely gone. As they would say, New Hampshire, it's going. And um, I'm going to show you what I do to mark stuff. I use whiteout and some other little methods of doing things. But um, I'm going to rotate the engine clockwise. It's always a good idea to rotate these type of engines clockwise because of that tensioner. You go backwards with it. If this was the motor was going to be using, you can flex this little piece of polyurethane and it cracks and breaks. It's meant to go one way. Um, and then this thing is tricky to get lined up so far as the timing marks on the sprockets that's behind all this because you can't see any of it. <laughs> it's just, just a little FYI. Oh, come on, camera. So let me get that ready here. I'm going to 
turn where I can line up. There's a dot here, and then there's another dot there. I think I got to line up the car. I got to, I'm gonna look my marks up, and I'll show you I got all that. So we'll we'll print that out, and then um, we'll get these lined up, and then we'll make sure we've got. As you can see, we've got an R here, and we've got some dots, uh, some holes and whatnot and all, and then we'll, we'll get that lined up. There's marks on the new chain that have uh, indicators, but uh, we'll try to get it as close as we can before we take it apart, just for good measure. Then we're going to knock, we got to get this plug out too. i got to get that out so I can get to the bolt for the, hold that cassette tensioner, dumoflachie thingy in. Okay, here we go. Okay, right here is a, um, a printout of the timing marks. I want this. I want you to be able to see that, and you can take a screenshot of that there and blow that up if you need to. But you can see how the marks line up. And top dead center on the harmonic balancer is lined up with the keyway. And I did not line that up, so I'm not putting the timing cover back on. I'm pressing the pulley back on, so I'm going to turn the keyway in that direction and get that mark almost straight down. I may have having to put the cover back on. But anyhow, you see what I got there. So when you do this, make sure you put the leave the cover on first and line it up with top dead center. <laughs> but uh, all right, let me get that done and get all my stuff lined up. All right, so I just, I just threaded the cover on enough. I did. I put it back on. <laughs> It'd be easy. So I lined it up. Of course, a little FYI, you need these marks to be straight up and down. So we're going to go a little bit more. I want that you want the L to be on the other side where you can read it. Same thing right here, because there's gonna be a little indicator that pops up when I take these bolts off that it should be up and down. You've seen it on the paper, so let me spin it some more. Okay, you can see now. There they say I got the marks where I can see them up. And if you notice this the the right cylinder head is used if you're sitting in the vehicle, so so this would be the right and this would be the left. You saw in the paper where they want the dots on that little thing that print out and we're lined back up. I just I just stuck the pulley on enough and I used a screw, a big pry bar, and just jammed it in the little spot right here and turned it. So if you've done what I did, you can just thread the cover on with just a couple of bolts. And I used a bolt here and there, and I let this one right here just kind of hanging it. But uh, yeah, okay. So let me go ahead and pull that back off now. All right, just like in the paper we've seen, we've got our keyway to the right, and we've got a dot down here, just about straight down. I'll mark that with, with my white out again. The dots straight up, and then with the new components, we'll be able to put these on these dots. So now what we're ready to do is um, we're going to remove the... We're going to pull this tensioner, push it back with a pair of pliers to squeeze that back and put a little uh, like a little straight pin, like a you know Allen wrench or something would work, but I have some of the things that go in that. So we'll put something in there to hold that back. Um, I guess before I do that, I'll go ahead and pull this bolt off right here so that this is ready to pull off of there and stuff. So uh, let me go ahead and get this all set up. All right, so we got the uh, timing marks marked. And um, we're getting ready to, I got to pull this. I'm going to pull these bolts off here so that I can see my little dumoflaches that's going to be sticking up. I know it's real technical. I got this cam plug thing out so you can get to that bolt right there you're going to have to remove that little deal right there because there's a bolt that holds in there's a it's a torx bit thing that holds that set in there another one's going to be right here i think right in that little hole and then um as you can see this is why you don't rotate the engines counterclockwise i have to press that back to relieve the tension off of this cam sprocket and so um uh, and you can see that the polyurethane little guy just does it when they're new they flex really well but as they get old they get real hardened up so if you rotate the engine backwards all the slack goes that way and you'll push and you'll break this right here so always try to maintain a clockwise motion when you're working on these engines uh, doing whatever you have to do for whatever reason while you turn the motor go clockwise with it always do that make a habit and uh so let me get these are your tensioners and then we'll we'll get these out in just a second and um i got new ones going back but i'll show you how to push these back one here in just a second so let me go ahead and get these bolts removed when we'll be able to get a little closer look at what's going on quick installment of this right quick as i do this um i've used a, a four pair look he's gonna hide from the camera that's my look at you you're gonna be on youtube this is my buddy alex he helps me in the shop by the way wave a hand at me leave a comment in the section really? telling him he said yeah you're gonna be on youtube uh so uh yeah and so uh i used a, a locking i made my own locking tool with just some vice grips down on this cylinder head this way down on that cylinder head that way i've used a uh, a punch and i've made a little mark here and the dot on both sides very carefully on this cam bushing because it's aluminum you don't want to mess it up so you don't have to hit that very hard to leave the dents uh then the same thing on this head over here 
And uh, now we're going to pull these bolts off the front there and then try to drop some stuff off and see what happens. All right, a little bit more of a further along ado. I've got the old chains out, just kind of pulling that sprocket that slips off the crank out. And then um, I've got this thing partially installed, just enough to kind of hang it in there. And I went ahead and dropped the chains down, and I haven't put any of the guides back in yet because that'll allow me the flexibility necessary to kind of finagle the chains back around the uh, sprockets. Now, you won't be able to see a timing mark on the back of this or anything because there's, a, from what I can tell, there's nothing there. It's just pretty much when you get the chain lined up here and then all the slack to one side, you should be timed up. And we'll know because what we'll do is rotate the engine and check our timing marks that we made up here where I dotted the cam and everything. That's why it pays to mark everything before you take it apart. Um, and so uh, basically I've got to slide the, uh, the jack shaft assembly chain thingy in place with the chain already on it and kind of finagle everything and, and then kind of push the work the chains back around both of those sprockets at the same time. It's a little bit cumbersome. There's no real gracious way to do that. And then the rest of it will be just kind of like slinging the chains around on the positions of the sprockets to line up with our dots. That's it, that, that's there and then on the other sprocket as well. And you can see one sprocket has a reluctor wheel to read off of the camshaft sensor. So it's important that you put those on the same, on the correct side. All right, well, let me uh, do that right quick here and then we'll see how this goes. All right, so um, we got, we're having side conversations, me and Alex. Uh, so check this out. Um, we got uh, both sides at, at directly at 12 o'clock. And, you know, you've seen my marks that I made above the cam up here. And I've rotated the engine around a full 360 degrees. And I got those marks to line back up right there. You can see them. And I uh, made a couple of marks for my own right here and right there so that I could put everything back and double check. And basically I had to kind of just, I left the guides out enough to where I could fumble the chain around and get it where it needed to be for the most part. And this side I've already done. I've uh, pulled the bolt out and cleaned all the hole out. Cleaned the hole with a brake cleaner and an air hose to clean all the oily residue out off the bolt. And this like to put a little bit of Loctite and that helps the Loctite hold. And, I've, and to help when I tighten this down with my impact gun, I just used a row of vice grips in the direction of the bolt being tightened. So I can uh, maybe not beat the chain and guide too much when I tighten it down with my impact gun. And I'm just going to use my uh, 3 8 drive first and then just bump it a couple times with my half inch drive. And uh, I think there's a torque spec for it, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything to do it with my impact gun. I'd rather it be a little bit tight than not enough. And uh, using a torque wrench sometimes tries to turn everything and it turns into a mess after that. So um, but that'll be pretty much how you time this motor up and you can see I've got my mark which I've, I rotated the engine so you won't see my, my cam mark here anymore and you want to rotate the engine however many links that is to get that back up but as you can see we're, we're in time now and that's pretty much so what I got to do is I got to pull these out so that'll release the, the mechanical tensioners and they, they have little latches in them and then oil pressure takes over to take up the slack if you want to uh, slide this tensioner back if you're using the old tensioners which I recommend replacing everything because one of them was bad, and this is not even not even catching because of the one side that was slack. It kind of beat the uh, beat that out, so you can see that. But anyways, just for reference, if you've got to take it apart to work on it or whatever, you can use a, a little small flat blade screwdriver, and you can push this back, uh, and, and that will get. The, then you can use the um, the uh, little thing that goes in after that that'll lock in. Trying to see here if I if I remember right. Let me check this out. Make sure I'm telling you right. Yeah, yeah, I told you right. Yeah, I told you right. You just pick up on that uh, little notch right there, and you'll push that up. And then once you get it all the way back, you just drop your little retainer lock ring back in the little hole. As you can see where this one's at. That's where you drop that in, and that'll hold the tensioner back so you can get it back down in there with that. Uh, and you can use anything, an Allen wrench, something, whatever fits in that hole right there. And uh, that's pretty much basically it. Uh, let's see. All right, we thank you for tuning in to We'll Fix It, team. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful rest of the week ahead, and I hope this video helps somebody working on a dirty old, a damned old dirty greasy engine, a Dodge. Damned old dirty greasy engine. Mm -hmm. You heard it first. All right, take it easy, guys. Peace out.